Hey everybody, this is Greg Pettix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Pettixonian Institute of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Thunder Dogs by Hunt Emerson. This is a Underground from 1981, published by Ripoff Press. If you don't know Hunt Emerson, he's like, a, I would almost say, England's cartoonist emeritus. This guy's been drawing comics since the early 70s. Started doing fanzines. Then started getting regular strips in the 40 in times and um, a men's magazine called Fiesta. He's done graphic novels. He's adapted Lady Chatterley's Lover and The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. He's been in many, I don't know, hundreds of anthologies at this point. Because this guy's still working. He's still putting out gag strips. Um, just has this great cartoony style. Uh, you know, obviously very comical. This guy's just always, nothing serious with Hunt Emerson. Everything's like as many laughs as he can squeeze into a panel. That's what he's uh, aiming for. It's a really fun cover. Let me show you the, the full thing. I don't want to mess the comic up too much. But um, Thunder Dogs is kind of a parody of the Blackhawks. Um, the quality comics uh, slash DC comics characters. But of course he just goes off and... It starts as a little parody of that, and then it just goes off in crazy directions. So let's check this out. He dedicate, dedicates it to Wally Wood, which is interesting. So uh, we see the Thunderdogs land on this little island, and the natives come out, and they're very excited that they're there. As you can see, it's just total zany cartooning. Very cartoony. And Thunder Dogs are very gung-ho. All the natives are very happy that they're there. Because they've got a problem. They, uh, the, the chief tells uh, him that there's this guy been going around to all the villages and just coming in and taking their stuff. But it's weird. It's like he doesn't like force it away from them. It's like he somehow convinces these people to give it away. It's uh, very odd. So he says, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So the Thunderhawks, I'm sorry, the Thunder Dogs fly away in their craft, their aircraft, the Typhoid Mary, it's called. And they see another craft. And they're like, follow it. This could be a lead. And uh, they follow it to this other island. And the natives there are like, Oh, you just missed the guy. He took all our stuff. <laughs> he robbed us blind. So like, shit, how did he do that so fast? And then uh, the navigator uh, says, uh, there's only one more island between here and the edge of the world. So he's, he's, he's got to be there. We got him cornered. I like this here, this guy who's yelling land ho. He's screaming so loud that his like another mouth is coming out from his mouth. So they land on this island and they see these guys playing cricket and they're hiding behind a bush and they're like, okay, we got we to gotta sneak up on these guys and attack. And it, uh, the narrator talks about uh, how uh, th they're thoroughly trained in mystic Eastern modes of unarmed combat. Their every movement is precise and controlled. Let us sit back for a moment to admire the ballet, balletic fluidity. <laughs> and then the Thunder Dogs are just mauling these guys. There's nothing, uh, there's no finesse about it. It's not like a ballet. It's like, it's just with their bare hands. And this, it's like a bar fight, you know? But they're ma massacring these guys. Such good art. And uh, then when they're done, they realize that they're robots. Because Major Mongrel, their leader, is just totally losing himself and destroying these guys. And they're like, Major, stop. Look, they're robots. So it was just a, it was a trap. The, the guy who's been stealing from these uh, islands left these as a decoy. So the ship crashed on the island, I forgot to mention that. And when they went off to fight, uh, to find the guy, they left uh, three guys behind and said, okay, you guys fix the craft and uh, 
we'll we'll go off and you know you know catch this dude. So when they come back, the the Typhoid Mary is totally crazily redesigned because the three guys found some loco weed in, on the island and just got really high and tricked it out. Pretty cool design. So the ship takes off. I love this panel right here. Just, uh, I don't know, it looks like something that could be, it's like Rick Griffin meets Gilbert Shelton. Just really just beautifully designed. So that they're, they're gonna head over the edge of the world. They figure the guys, that's where the guy went, the, the thief. And then we get chapter two. And we have this amazing page where this one scene is broken down into all these panels. I really like this. Kind of like a, you know, little Jim Steranko trick slash Paul Galassi. And Major Mog was all by himself in this really crazy place with these weird alien women who've got like, I don't know, snail faces. And then he, now we're seeing like Hunt Emerson, you know, be Hunt Emerson, like all the little gadgets and things in the background are just so bizarrely designed, just totally alien constructs. He's really good at that. I think this first chapter, he was trying to, that's why it's dedicated to Wally Wood. He was trying to almost be play it straight. Like Hunt Emerson usually doesn't use this kind of shading and stuff because he wanted it to look like, have a texture, you know? Look like a, a real comic, if you will. So uh, when he wakes up, these strange alien women, uh, they say, don't remove your visor. Because he wakes up with this visor on his eyes. The visual spectrum in this place is such that your eyes would go pafoit within seconds. So uh, he's like, you know, I got to continue on my mission. So he leaves them. And then this guy shows up. This goofy little guy. Kicks him in the ass. Look at the backgrounds. He has a lot of Harriman influences in his backgrounds. George Harriman, things just, the backgrounds just shift and change all the time. Like, look at that, as far as Harriman, that moon. So this guy's name is Zip Crinkle, Professor Zip Crinkle. And he says, I'm gonna be the Virgil to your Dante, and I'll show you the works. And he says, who are those females? And he said, oh, they were only there to warn you about the light, about which they lie, lied as it happens. And he says, oh, you mean I could take off this mask? They were lying? And as soon as he does, look at that. His eyes just explode. He's left with two smoking holes. And the guy's just laughing. He, he was just a big joke. He tricked him. But he gives him these substitute eyes that... Uh, of pickled gallstones and they work. So here's where things get, you know, very uh, different. So he says, follow me, come with me. And you see this hole in the page. It's even wrinkling. It looks like the paper's wrinkling. And then he says, where am I? And Zip Crinkle says, you're between pages 19 and 20. They're in the rafters behind the comic art. We see these two guys with plans. You know, I guess they create the comic, these two workmen. And there's all this, uh, this canvas from behind. And then he hears a, a woman screaming. So he's like, I gotta get out of here. Thunderdog's to the rescue. So now he's back in the comic. He pops out into the comic. And he sees this very Wolverton-like, uh, Basil Wolverton-like creature threatening this woman who's all chained up. So I don't know why, instead of just jumping on the creature from like, it's only three feet away, he laboriously runs down these stairs, takes him a little while. And then he starts fighting the monster. so he can free the woman. But then after he frees her, um, 
she turns into this really weird looking, kind of looks like a dog. So she, that was an alien shape for her. The one that looked like a, a hot woman. So he hightails it out of her. Now he's not that interested in uh, rescuing her and hanging out with her. So he says, oh, I got to get back to business. You know, finding this uh, thief. Zip Crinkle shows up again. He's almost like Bugs Bunny. He can, seems like he breaks the laws of reality, just pops up wherever. And he says, uh, let me take you to this bar, Bud's Bar. And now we got chapter three. So Bud is the bartender. And uh, he's, I guess he's, um, he, he knows more about metaphysics than anybody and people come in here and ask him questions all the time. So, uh, the bud, the bartender says, hey, looks like you got a lot in your mind. What's your problem, Major Mongrel? And he, Major Mongrel's like, this adventure just doesn't seem like the way it should be. Because, <laughs> you know, everything's gotten all surreal. It was just a normal Thunder Dogs adventure, and now he's like trapped in this weird area, and there's no fighting going on. So he he's like, "This isn't right," and he tells the whole story to um, the bartender, and he says, "It seems pretty clear to me. You went over the edge of the world, and now you're two dimensional. You left the three dimensional world, and uh, ever since then, you're in this. You're only two dimensional." So then I love the way he plays with the shit. So he's he's two dimensional. That's why he's not shaded. And that first chapter was everything was heavily shaded because, you know, that's a three dimensional world. So back in the third dimension, uh, the Thunder Dogs, they've been looking for him. And uh, they see him, you know, in two dimensions. They're flying over him. You can see the shadow of the plane on his face because he's flat. And then they're walking all over him. Really good perspective here. He makes it seem like, you know, it's like trompe l'oeil or whatever you call that. <laughs> um, you know, for trick in the eye. And they're walking on and they're even pulling the page up. And uh, he's like, cut it out. Everything's shaking when you do that. The plane's just like on his face. So they're just on top of the comic page looking down at him, but they can still talk to him. And he's stuck there. He's like, I'll try, I'll try to figure out a way to get out of here. The second two-dimensional realm. So he can't figure out a way to get out. And he figures, if all the stuff's flat, then what's on the other side? And he lifts up a palm tree, a drawing of a palm tree. And it says, Mr. 2D 3D's Novelty Empire. And there's an address. Ball Point, Pennsylvania. So he's like, ooh, this is a good clue. And then he writes in, I guess, the sky. He writes a note for the Thunder Dogs telling him to go to this address in the third dimension while he goes to it in the second dimension. And then he figures, hey, the easiest way to get there is I'm two-dimensional. I'll fold myself up and put myself in an envelope and put it in the mail and mail myself there. So now we're back with the Thunder Dogs in the third dimension. They're at their base. Man, I love his cartoony style. It's just manic. So uh, they see his message. I'm sorry, Major Mongo's message and they head to Pennsylvania in the third dimension. So uh, back in the second dimension, Major Mongo's in the post box. He's just waiting and waiting to be delivered. And so it turns out when he comes out, Zip Crinkle's there. It turns out, and he admits he's the thief. He's the treasure thief. And so he tapes him, pastes him down. Sorry, he secures him with scotch tape because he's just two dimensional. 
just slap some tape on him. And he reveals that he sells novelties and what he does is he just takes them from villagers and then he sells the same shit back to him. He just keeps stealing and selling these whatever trinkets he can get. And uh, he says something, he says the most brilliant part about working in the two dimensions from the inside of a magazine, I even cut out the expense of advertising because people are going to read about his business when they read, whenever they read this comic. So now the thunder, we're back in the third dimension. The Thunder Dogs, <coughs> excuse me, are heading towards uh, Ballpoint, Pennsylvania. But I guess there's some crazy shit in the third dimension too because they're shooting uh, Howard's uh, cannons at him and they get hit by a bling sound effect. We see it, you know, at an angle and it punctures the wing and they crash. So there's this visual gag where he's like, one of the guys is like, luckily I have a spare thunder truck in my knapsack. And then they get hit by a mine. Happily for all concerned, I remembered to pack a thunder yacht. And then they've been tor they get torpedoed. And then he says, hey boys, I got a bunch of thunder pogo sticks in my pocket. Now we're back with Major Mongrel. And they didn't really set this up, but I guess he has this like voice activated a lighter fuel dispenser. He kind of whistles and it comes at him. It's this little flying thing. And it squirts the lighter fluid on his tape restraints, which unsticks the sticky tape. It's almost like a gooby gone. And he breaks free. <clears throat> so he's going after Zip Crinkle. It's like, come here, I'm going to pulverize you. Such fun cartooning. So back in the 3D, they, they're into that the, the factory with a 2D, 3D place. And they finally come face to face with the fo their foes. And there's all these weird little goofy guys. And one of them jumps out and pokes one of them in the eye. And then a huge melee starts. That's a good great page. At the same moment, uh, Major Mongrel is, you know, beating the shit out of Zip Crinkle. And he says, Zip Crinkle says, you think I've been defeated, but I have one final weapon which you cannot resist. And Major Mongrel's cringing, saying, my, my one weakness, I'm finished. And then Zip Crinkle's give counting out some money 25 quid enough 30 done so that's his major weakness is he bribes him sorry these pages are sticking and then finally the 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 thunder thunder dogs and the little imps that they've been fighting crash through into the two-dimensional world the comics page rips and they land right on zip crinkle and totally squish him that's some good shit yeah hunter emerson ne never uses this kind of shading or pretty rarely he's just doing it to show the 3d-ness of these characters and now we have a little epilogue and this old guy's telling his grandkid, and that's how the whole thing happened. And Zip Crinkle was locked up for a long time. And, uh, but he was only locked in the bathroom. He locked himself in the bathroom on the train to, uh, to the prison. At, at which, by which time his appeal had come through and he was admit, he was acquitted. He went on to be governor of California. And the kid asked him, was there a reward? And he says, yep, there was a reward, but uh, somebody uh, absconded with it. That's how I got to this island. So this guy was just the Thunderdog's treasurer. And uh, and the kid's all like, whatever happened, to, whatever happened to Major Mongrel? And he says, we never did find a way to get him out of the, the 2D universe. He's still in there. Let me see. 
There you are, he used to have a whole comic book, but now he's just a newspaper strip churned out by hacks. So <laughs> Major Mongo is stuck there, so as his popularity waned, he's just some crappy little comic strip. So that's it, Thunderdogs, a very bizarre, surreal comedy comic um, by Hunt Emerson. Uh, if you can't find this, look up some other Hunt Emerson stuff. He just really is just a really great cartoonist and uh, always lots of yucks in his comics. Pretty funny stuff. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time at the Pedixonian Institute of Comic Book Studies.